Replacing an existing four-way light switch circuit in my house, so that's three switches uh, with this GE um, Z-Wave Smart Dimmer and two of these GE add-on switches. I thought I would do a quick video to explain uh, how I did the wiring and how I figured out which switches need to go where. Um, I'll preface this with saying that I'm not an electrician and uh, all houses are not wired the same. So I'll just show you what I did and what worked for me and explain why and hopefully that can be helpful for you. Modern home, a lot of four-way wiring circuits are uh, going to look like this. So you have your breaker box. From your breaker box you've got your common wire and your hot wire which I have here listed in black coming into a switch box with a three-way switch. Um, and then in this circuit you're also going to have a four-way switch and another three-way switch. Um, between each of the switch boxes you're going to have um, two wires. They're not always going to be red and black. Don't make assumptions based on colors but they often will be a red and a black um, going from switch to switch. Now you're also going to have the what's typically the white wire. I have it in blue here because white wouldn't show up on my paper. Again don't make assumptions about colors um, but the white is often common. I have that kind of showing a separate path here because um, while it does go to these boxes, um, it is not actually involved in the switching. Uh, so the white wire or the common wire would not be connected to the, the switches in this type of wiring configuration. Um, heads up, if you're planning to use these GE smart switches or a lot of other smart switches, they do require a common wire to be in the box. So you should probably take your existing switches out of the electrical box and look to see if you have the bundled up common wires in the back. Uh, before you plump down the money for your switches. Um, but so from uh, three-way switch to four-way switch, you're going to have two wires, typically going to be red and black. And then from that four-way switch into the other three-way switch, you're going to have uh, two traveler wires there. And then coming out of that three-way box, uh, you're going to have the hot wire that actually goes to your light bulb. Now, the trick here is how do we figure out which of these two three-way boxes is the one that the power from the circuit breaker panel comes into and which one is the one that the lead goes out to the light. Uh, the four-way is easy to determine which is which uh, just by physical appearance and let's go look at that. Existing three-way switches um, you can see there are uh, three conductors in this case two black and one red connected to it and then this here that looks like it's a white wire is actually the ground wire. You can see the green screw. So three conductors and a ground. Here is our other three-way switch. Again, two black conductors, a red conductor, and a ground wire. If you look in the back of this box, you'll see that bundle of uh, white wires that is your common that I was talking about before. And then here's our four-way switch, and it's easy to tell which one this is because if you look closely, you can see four conductors, in this case, two red, two black, and then also the ground wire. Here that one of the most important things we have to do is to figure out which one of these three-way switches has the constant supply of current coming in from the breaker panel, and which one has the, the line going out to the actual light. Um, the reason that's important is uh, with these smart switches, they don't behave electrically the same way as the existing switches do. Um, the existing switches, what's actually happening is the current is actually flowing from the breaker panel. If you look at the picture here, it's actually flowing um, through the black wire all the way through the circuit, coming back through the red wire all the way back through the circuit to complete the circuit. And if any of these switches is uh, switched one way or the other, then that interrupts the circuit and it keeps the power from going to the light. That's not how the smart switches work. The way the smart switches work is um, there's one uh, switch that actually does the switching or the dimming and that goes in this position here uh, with a constant supply of power from the breaker panel. The other wires are used for the dummy switches that go in here to communicate to the master switch and tell it, hey, someone just told me to turn the lights on or off or someone told me to dim the lights, but they, they are not actually involved in the electrical circuit. This wire is used as a, a low voltage conduit just to send signals over to this switch. 
So it's very important that we get the master switch in this position um, and then uh, the the other two switches go in the other positions but it's still important to know which is which because um, we have to know which one has the wire actually going out to the light fixture itself. Now that we know what we're trying to figure out, I'll show you how I did it. I'm a bit of a nerd so I used a spreadsheet and you could just as easily use a, a pen and a piece of paper. Um, but with this uh, four-way switch with uh, three switches, there's eight possible combinations of um, switches being up and down that can result in the lights being on or off. One other thing I should say before I go on is um, if you have some sort of a situation where the third switch only works if the first two are in the up position and it doesn't always work all the time, uh, for one thing you need to call an electrician, for another thing uh, this probably isn't going to help you, but if you have again the, the most common uh, configuration, wiring configuration for a modern house, this should help. Um, so what I did here is I went through all um, eight uh, permutations of switches being up and down. That's what I have in the first three columns there. Um, I recorded whether the light was on or off and then I actually went around to each of the three existing switches and recorded um, for each of the wires that are connected to those switches uh, whether they were hot, which I have indicated with a 1, or not, which I have indicated with a 0. Um, I just used a voltage sniffer to do this. That is this neat little tool here. Um, if you're going to be doing uh, stuff like this, especially as an amateur, um, this guy is indispensable. Uh, the way he works is he just tells you if there's power close to the tip or not. So I'm going to stick him right into this outlet here. And it'll beep letting us know there's power. And if we go in this one, we get nothing because that's the common. So once I recorded um, which wires were hot in which positions, um, there were two pieces of data that we were looking for. One was um, which of these switches has the constant supply of current from the power or from the panel, and the other was uh, which of these wires is actually going to the light bulbs uh, to carry the power to the light fixtures themselves. I've got this highlighted for you in red and yellow. Um, so the um, one thing to note, I didn't, I didn't notate this in the spreadsheet, but when the light is actually on, if you follow uh, one of those across, like we'll say row four here, um, you'll see that when the light is actually on, all the wires are hot because current is flowing all the way through that pathway like we talked about before. Um, but you'll see different combinations depending on which switch is off and where the circuit is actually broken. So the one thing that we, we can see here is if you look in column F, the red shaded column there, um, whether the lights were on or off, that wire was always hot. So that tells us that's the hot wire coming from the panel. And then if you look at the yellow column, column I, you'll see that whether it was hot or not uh, matches exactly with whether the light is on or off. So that tells us that that's the wire going out to the light fixtures. All right, we're going to look at our GE Smart Dimmer here. You can see that there are four terminals. There is load on the bottom left, there's line, there's neutral, and there's the traveler. Um, the line terminal is where we're going to put the uh, constant supply of current from the breaker. Oops. Um, the load is what would be connected to uh, the actual load or the light bulb in this case. Um, the neutral wire, they supply a pigtail in the box, I'll show you in a minute, um, that can go into the bundle of uh, common wires, typically white, we saw in the back of the box earlier. And then the Traveler, you see they put this piece of tape over it and it says no 120 volts. This is to remind you of what we talked about earlier that while we're still using the same wires in the circuit, they're not electrically being handled the same way and we're not actually going to uh, have 120 volt uh, mains current going into this terminal. So um, remember what I said earlier that this is the only switch that's really going to be involved in the electrical circuit in the, anymore and the other two switches are just uh, dumb, they're just going to be sending um, instructions to this switch. In fact, if we look at one of these dummy switches um, you'll see that it has a terminal for a traveler and a terminal for a neutral wire and that's it. There's no terminal for 
load or line, so there's not even any way for this to interrupt the circuit and act as a traditional switch at all. So, reminder, looking at our circuit diagram here, what we're actually going to do is, um, in this first box, we're going to uh, connect this constant supply of current to the line terminal on our master switch and we're going to connect this black wire here to the load terminal on our master switch. Then what we're actually going to do is in the second box we're going to take our two black wires and we're just going to wire nut those together because this switch is no longer going to be interrupting the flow of current, remember? So then the current is going to flow all the way into the third box and again here we're going to take our two wires our two black wires in this case, and we're going to wire nut them together. So we really just have one long wire that's all electrically connected going all the way to the light now, and those other switches aren't involved in the conversation. Then in these boxes, we'll take our uh, slave switches, our dummy switches, and we will connect to the neutral wire, which is how uh, the switch gets the very small supply of electricity that it needs to run. And then we'll just connect the red wires to the uh, traveler ports here. And the red wires are going to go into the traveler ports on both of these switches, and then also into the traveler port on the main, the master switch. Now, I keep talking about wire colors, and I want to remind us that we're not going to make assumptions based on wire colors. So, what we can do to make sure that the wire colors are uh, actually. Um, bearing out in our circuit, or in other words, to make sure that we, we have the right wires, we know which wires we are using. We can go ahead and, and um, wire the circuit up the way that we're going to use it with the wire nuts in the second and third boxes here um, before we even put the smart, uh, the smart dimmer in. And we can make sure that the circuit behaves the way we want it to with just a traditional switch in the first box. Uh, and that will confirm that our wires are uh, doing what we need them to. We also could use a continuity tester. That's probably a, um, a better way and maybe even a safer way to do this. But um, from the research that I've done with the spreadsheet I showed you, I'm confident I know what the wires are. So I'm just going to show you uh, how, to, um, how to wire this up so that you can test it with the... Um, with the circuit in place before you actually replace the switches. Here's our switch where the constant supply of power coming in from the breaker is. Um, you can see that we've left the constant supply for the breaker and the black wire that we're using is our conductor connected to the switch. The red wire we've snipped off and is capped just temporarily for safety's sake. And uh, of course we did that with the circuit de-energized, the breaker turned off. And you can see here, I've got no power in the um, that conductor, but I do have power in the constant power. Go ahead and turn the switch on. And now I've got power up here as well. This is the switch box where our four-way switch was. Um, we have um, wire twisted the two conductors together here. We've got current there. The two red wires are capped just temporarily for safety. And then finally, this is our third switch box where the uh, wire actually going to the light fixture is. And again, we've got these two black conductors twisted together here. And we do have current in those. And then the red wire is temporarily capped for safety. So what this shows you is our research about the wires and their usage were correct. We now have a single conductor coming all the way from uh, the switch box where the master switch will be going all the way to the light fixture. So we are prepared to install our smart switches now. So here is our master dimmer. Uh, we have the um, constant power in our line terminal um, and our uh, conductor that we connected the black wire all the way to the light fixture in the load terminal. Um, we've got our red traveler wire plugged into the traveler terminal. Uh, we've got our ground wire and the ground screw. And then we do have our uh, neutral wire, white wire here. That's the little pigtail that's included in the box. Uh, it's going to this green wire not here where we see the bundle of all the common wires that were already in this electrical box and uh, have those pigtails connected up to there. 
This next box is what used to be our four-way switch box. Um, so we've got the two red wires here, both connected to the traveler screw, uh, which joins them together electrically. Remember the red wires in this case are just kind of our uh, low voltage communication pathway. So we're tying them together here. Um, again, white wire going into the bundle of uh, white wires that was existing in the box and uh, ground on the ground screw. And then our third box, remember these two black wires connected together are the, the load line running all the way from the uh, first box and then the wire, the conductor that actually goes to the light fixture. Again, we've got the white pigtail here from the existing common bundle in the box and then we've got the uh, red traveler wire and the ground screw. Everything is all connected and working properly. The only thing left to do is put the face plates on and uh, I'll let you handle that one on your own. Um, again, I think the understanding of the, the difference in the electrical circuit between how it was wired with traditional switches versus what we have to do to make it work with the master switch and the uh, dummy slave switches. Um, it's a lot easier to understand, I think, once you diagram that out and understand how it works electrically. The uh, instructions that come in the box are a little cryptic and uh, make some pretty big assumptions that you're going to know which switch goes to the light fixture and which switch has constant power. So hopefully this is helpful for you figuring out that needed information and hope you enjoyed it.